This is an OpenGL animation of our inner solar system with orbits calculated by Resolver 1. You can see Mercury just here, um, it's the innermost obviously, and it's zipping around on a very elliptical orbit, so you can s see quite clearly here that the distance, uh, the furthest distance from the Sun is quite a lot larger than the closest approach. A bit further out we've got uh, Venus, uh, which is uh, moving a bit more slowly and is on an almost perfect circle. Then there's the Earth, and even further out we've got Mars. Um, the distances between the planets on this particular on this particular animation are all perfectly to scale, and the Sun is drawn to the same scale. But the planets themselves were actually drawing 1,000 times larger than life. Um, the reason for that is that if they were drawn to scale, then they'd just be dots, and the animation would be kind of boring. Okay, let's rotate this view a little bit. And if you just ignore the dots that dotted lines down here, that's the outer planets. You can see that the inner planets here are, um, they're not actually orbiting all on the same plane. All of the actual orbits are at slight angles to each other. One of the nice things about a manipulatable 3D view like this is that you can, um, you can see things like this. Okay, let's go back to that sort of top-down view that we started with, and we'll then try, oh, yeah, we'll try zooming out a little bit. So, a bit further out, and there we go, we can see Jupiter. Keep going. And there is Saturn with its rings. And what's interesting here is how you can see that these planets are also drawn um, at uh, 1,000 uh, times their uh, actual size, and yet you can scarcely see the inner planets compared to them. They're really, really massive compared to the uh, the inner planets. Let's go a bit further out. We've got a planet whose uh, name is uh, the butt of many a bad joke. Yes, it's Uranus. Sorry about that. Okay, yep, there it is. And we'll go a bit further out, and you can see Neptune just over here, really quite a lot further away. And then for sentimental reasons, I've decided to, uh, decided to include um, Pluto on here as well. Now, you can't actually see Pluto. Um, you might, hopefully, at YouTube resolution, you'll be able to see the path around here. And you might just about be able to see that tiny little dot there. That's the planet Pluto, or the subplanet, or minor planet, or whatever it's called these days. Um, it's actually drawn uh, 10,000 times larger than life. Um, the reason for that being that it's so small it would be totally invisible at this kind of level of, zo um, of zoom. Let's rotate the view again and we'll take another look at those uh, the different orbits and their inclinations to the, um, to the ecliptic. You can see here most of the planets are on roughly the same kind of plane. Um, we've got Neptune at quite an angle and then Pluto you know, really way out there. I'll zoom in a bit to the inner solar system, see if we can get a nice little shot there. Oh yes, there's Saturn. There we go. Nice shot of uh, some of the inner solar system with Saturn transiting in the background. Okay, so that's the pretty pictures. Let's take a look at the spreadsheet behind it. So what we've got here is um, one sheet with with one line for each planet, with some basic information like the name of each planet and a color to draw it in, and its radius, and then a scale to apply to the radius. So you see 1,000 for every planet apart from Pluto, which I'm scaling up by 10,000. Um, and then we've got a number of uh, increasingly abstruse orbital parameters, which I copied from Wikipedia. Um, so we start off with something simple, the orbital period, the number of days in its in its year. We've got the semi-major axis, which is kind of an average distance from the Sun. And then uh, eccentricity, so how close to a circle the, um, the orbit is. And then a number of, as I say, increasingly abstruse and weird sounding um, uh, orbital parameters. Um, oh, one interesting thing here, which I'll explain in more detail in the blog post that supports this video, but uh, this is the rings function. This is just basically how I specify that Sa that Saturn has rings, and if you were to download the spreadsheet, you could tweak it and uh, add rings to other planets if you're so inclined. 
What we do with these parameters is we put them together into a worksheet for each one of the uh, planets. We'll go to Mercury as an example. And um, you can see that uh, <coughs> that the numbers that, come, that were specified on that sheet are used to calculate a number of uh, column level formulae which work out the orbital parameters in more detail over time and thus give us what amounts to a series of x, y and z coordinates for the planet. So for Mercury we have here um, a list of 700 um, x, y, z coordinates and then those coordinates are processed by a bit of user code here and fed into a into a uh, OpenGL program which simply plots them. So the OpenGL program just needs to know there are these planets and they follow these particular paths and they have these colors. The, all of the calculation of the paths is worked out in the spreadsheet. All of those numbers go together and we wind up with this. If you'd like to know a bit more about how this spreadsheet works, or how the OpenGL code works, or anything like that, then please do read the uh, blog post that accompanies this video. Um, if you're watching the video uh, embedded inside the blog post, then please just read on. And if you're watching it on YouTube, then all you need to do is take a look at the details off to the right, and there'll be a link to the blog post there. Thanks very much for your time.